Today I need to clean this room up. Hello and welcome to a review rant random and probably one of the first ones filmed in the new house. And I'm not going to try and do loads lately. I've got a lot of stuff to do, especially fix that light bulb. A light. Um, but last night I haven't slept well. I watched Wall Street. I don't need much to share about Wall Street. So then I want to watch Wall Street too. The movie's rant about them, but the movie's not. Um, I watched The Frankenstein Fury. <laughs> the Frankenstein Fury. Now this has been in the collection for ages and I was getting right, I want to put it on. Oh, I remember picking this up and going, what's that kid from? Straight away, I was like, I don't know that kid from somewhere. Because normally when you get a found footage film, you get really, in, like, no one's re realising it. Recognise. Because that's part of the thing. And with found footage films, it's always, it's always inventful. For how it's going to be filmed. Like, again, going to exist. I love exist. I've done the podcast for it. That should be out by the time this video comes out. But exist is really well done because one of the guys is a complete camera tech nerd. So he's like got he's, he's got you covered, especially bringing the GoPro. This one straight away though, you're thinking, who's that guy? And it's the guy from the really old film, My Little Lie. And that's also kind of like on camera footage film. Not found, you know, it's snuff film really, isn't it? Right, okay, so watching this, um, if anyone doesn't know this, I'm terrified of Frankenstein, always has been from a kid. I watched the BBC production of Frankenstein um over two nights when I was a kid. And I've never seen it since, and um, it's it's been weird because like, it's one thing I've been trying to track down, and uh, for years no one knew what it was until I spoke to Killian H. Go, and um, I was totally mind blown to find out Randy Quaid was the creature, the monster. Um, yeah, visions. There's a lot of stalkism in that. What I remember this, you know, this guy is just an absolute creep. And then you've got loads of Frankensteins over the years, and we've had, you know, Mary Shelley and Frankenstein, Robert De Niro running around. And then we've had other stuff like I, Frankenstein, and, you know, Frankenstein pops up and stuff like Van Helsing. And that, the myth's really good. I mean, when you look at, like, Universal Studios and their reboot and a lot of stuff, Frankenstein probably is on the cards. But it's had numerous TV shows, especially in Penny Dreadful or the Frankenstein Chronicles. So, anyway. This film, The Frankenstein Theory, is based on the fact that this was a true event, a ramination of a true event, fictionalised and passed down through the generations. And the guy you know, has basically hired a documentary crew. He's been um, s dismissed from university. He's a college, he was a teacher. And he's basically just got to take a back seat in the moment. And he's obsessed with the theory that Frankenstein is real. And has narrowed it down to like the Arctic Circle. And... The migration of the, the the elements you know like no one's up there it's isolated um he follows a pattern of the, the summer and he's got a theory based on like random murders and stuff like that so him along with the camera guy who you briefly see and then forget about um two guys so three guys and a lady um all go up there and there's a guy called carl who's going to be there um location manager really their tour guide and it, it's pretty cool up there you can see that and that's one of the good things about found footage films and stuff like that is you know like um you you, you get the real elements you know set productions there's a lot of like there's a great with a bit of the dog kennel and stuff like that i might have reviewed this anyway um there's a dog kennel and stuff like that and it, it, you couldn't build you wouldn't build that for a set for a film you would be like nah I fucking save the money somewhere else pay somebody else for the trailer next week and then this you're like right okay that's cool and um as I say you're watching it and you're getting in there and like he starts laying it thick about why and you know they get isolated quite quickly they can't sleep because of the wolves there's a couple of scares you know, what's that noise and I think you know one by one then there was none because again you're watching a film footage film you like watching ghosts um i think every single death happens off camera i can't think of one death on camera and the first realization um i want to keep on talking i meant to do the spoilers in the outtakes i'm an idiot but the first because they're running around one guy's got his little camera and one guy's always got the shoulder mounted camera and you always think like fuck me like how many batteries must you have like you know what i mean like the coverage you've always got to, especially in long dialogue scenes when you're looking at coverage and one i really picked apart was welcome to the jungle and i'm not talking about the one what's also called the rundown and i'm not talking about jumanji welcome to the jungle i'm talking about the horror film welcome to the jungle 
when there's a scene when the Slash is lying on the pool table and there's two cameras and it's just like she's done two different takes all the way through and it's just like I don't know I, I got really picky about that one but again it's coverage and again they're a documentary film crew so yeah you expect it to be good but then it's off centre but then who's filming the other angle who cuts to it and all that kind of shit and jazz so you keep watching that and it flows a lot the realisation you know that there's, there's trouble there is quite good and the actors really do kick it in the gear and what's really startling about this is the real when they fucking see it for the first time and the riff's true it's fucking huge like the guy in the suit it's the guy in the suit you know like he's just standing there and it's you know it's from afar the the the, the this cabin thing he's got and he's just standing creeping in the background and that's pretty gruel and then like that's almost it. There's a little jump scare in the dark when you get up close. You know, oh, what the fuck was that? And then at the end, it just sort of does a Blair Witch on you. You know what I mean? It's sort of the camera's left, so you can go right where well, someone could pick the camera up. I mean, everyone else gets battened it off. Say it's the one guy who gets killed outside the camera. I'm totally spoiling this fucking film. Hopefully, he went right. I will watch it. The one guy who fucking gets killed. The scream is terrifying. The scream of pain, he must be having his arm ripped off and battered to death like Silliman Grundy died there then, you know. Oh, that's fucking scary. But yeah, Frankenstein Chronicle, uh, Frankenstein Fury. It did not look like that on that thing. But no, um, it's only 83 minutes. Picked it up. I think I own it on DVD and Blu ray. Um, I just enjoyed it. It was one of those things. Right, see you in the outtakes. Definitely you bastards not being on that shelf. That's an outtake. They nearly went south. The deep south. <laughs> I need to review that as well. Here in the outtakes, you can see I nearly smashed my um, banana men from the one and only Chris Angel. Oops. Now, as I say, I remember that Frankenstein film and um, the one time I've ever physically had it was recently in New Zealand. So, quick outtake um, for this is my brother Sam was at the top of the hill at well and then at the bottom of the hill was this video shop now while I was in Machuega which is on the other island um, I found ones at old VHS's and funny story is I posted them and still haven't got here <laughs> from New Zealand but um, when I posted these VHS's on Facebook some guy said oh why don't you come here while you're here so Welton's a big city and it is windy windy city whatever and it's all like uphill you do some miles uphill and it's like a, a port as well, so there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot going down. It's a capital. Where the studios went there and stuff. But they, when we went to Wetter Studios, Sam had to drive all the way across Welton. I mean, when we walked walk to the zoo, that was epic. It was funny story as well. I'm just having to run. Check out IT Adora, my show. Welcome to the land, land of the long white cloud. Got up in the morning. Me, Callum and Britt walked all the way across Welton to the zoo. And when we got there, Sam was there, but Sam had gotten them on, but Sam had to do errand runs for his work. And so we had this massive walk, and there was um, Sam on the way back. And I think that's when we went to Wetter. And that was a good, like, good drives around. So stuff we wanted to do, like the zoo and Wetter. And then there was this guy who said, come to this like, video shop. He's Sam's house, bottom of the hill. And it looked like some out of the 80s. It survives. If it doesn't have it on Blu-ray, it still has a DVD. If it doesn't have it on the DVD, it still has it on VHS. And again, check out the show. It's later on, the episode's like episode 10 or 11. Um, and I go there and I'm just in my element. And like downstairs, walking in videos, upstairs, VHS is everywhere. And then on the bottom shelf was Frankenstein. Right at the box, of course, Sam didn't have a VHS player. We were only there overnight, really. So I couldn't like, oh, take it back and watch it and scare it. I just looked at it and like instantly felt cold. Uh, flashbacks of the movie and stuff like that and it's terrifying that's the one film that got me as a kid Frankenstein, Randy Quaid laughing man, <laughs> same guy um, yeah, so that's our take thanks for watching, goodbye for now